Hello all my fishy friends and welcome back to another Stay Fishy Adventure. I'm currently on my way back to my house because I forgot the cooler, which contains all the bait that's gonna help us do this challenge today. So first forgotten item of the day, haven't even got to the river yet and I'm going back home to get the bait. So that's gonna really help us do our challenge today. Our goal is to not spend a dime. We're going barely any gas, only gas that's left in the boat. We're not buying any bait, we're not going to the store, we're not going to the tackle shop, we're just taking what we have and going out and by the end of this video are going to be preparing a very high-end gourmet meal for zero dollars so i'm really excited to take you guys along it's the beginning of my very favorite time of year and i cannot wait for the leaves to start falling and to be able to go do what we're doing today so stick around it's going to be an awesome adventure i appreciate you all so much for being here so without further ado let's get this damn cooler On my belt too. I always seem to forget something. Let's hit the water. Yes, yeah, we've made it to our destination. First order of business catch a salmon. I haven't ever really done a salmon video. If you guys didn't see the last one, I just did a video, a survival type of challenge, where I built a fishing pole out of a stick and paper clips and caught a salmon on it. But it was probably, I think, might have been the first salmon on Stay Fishy. I don't know, maybe not. But for the fall at least, it's fall salmon season. The time is now, there's salmon just starting to come up into the rivers. And so we're gonna try to catch a salmon for the main course of this dish tonight. So it's time to get some lines in the water, bait up some hooks, and see if we can't get ourselves a prize winning salmon. Okay, going with a Brad's wiggler. The old wig wig to start the day. Yes sir, yep, yep, yep. Okay, well, that works. Yeah, they're jumping. Dinner is waving at us right now. So, we have some salmon roe, little sand shrimp. But basically, sometimes you gotta get a little dirty to eat good. And again, I didn't buy this bait, I already had it. So if you guys didn't know, in my, in my spare time to support making this channel and Addicted Fishing, which is our other YouTube channel, if you guys don't know what that is, I have to guide temporarily in between. Uh, just to make up the time and to make some extra money as we build this YouTube and create a, a bigger community basically over time But I still had all this bait and stuff cured up from the last couple days of guiding so just adds to the flavor adds to the fun Let's catch one If you guys are wondering why I have three rods out, which is not legal in uh, the place that we are, you're allowed to have two per person, but I have my old trusty camera guy, Mr. Sean, behind the camera, and then I have a very good friend of mine who's a special guest on the next couple of episodes because he came all the way from the land of Patagonia. His name's Franco, and he's standing in the front of the boat casting. Meet him, everybody. Get <laughs> Franco's a good friend of mine, and I met him when I was traveling in Chile down chasing Chinook salmon. And it's a trip I'm gonna do again this year, so I want you guys to be on the lookout for it and be giving me feedback, and I want you to be just as excited as I am about going down there. It's in December, but Franco lives in a beautiful part of Patagonia where salmon that came from these same rivers we're standing on right now were taken to 60, 70 years ago and put in these rivers, and now they have flourishing runs coming back of giant Chinook salmon. So Franco's, oh, it's on there. We got a fish on everybody. Nope, came off. Oh, excuse me. Pardon the interruption. But anyways, Franco's a very good friend of mine and he came all the way from Chile to learn how to do some of our techniques and figure out some of the same methods that we catch fish with here in, in the Northwest. We have a fish on here. Nope. Pardon the interruption again. Things are happening. But nevertheless, it's gonna be very fun. We have some awesome, awesome trips planned and coming out. But welcome Franco to the Stay Fishy Adventures. Oh, there's a fish. Nope. It's the food that bites back, salmon fishing. 
two different species of salmon that we're going after today. One is a Chinook salmon and one is a coho salmon. Uh, and both are very, very delicious. So I don't have a preference towards either one. Whichever one we get, that's gonna help make the meal, will make me happy. But my favorite is probably the coho salmon and probably the hardest to catch right now. So let's see if we can make it happen. Got a dime sized and nickel size. Nickel, I'd say. Probably a nickel. This is the cast. This is the cast where we eat. Got him. Oh yeah. That's good. Just oh double. Oh god. There is live action right now. Things are happening. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, he's in the rod. He's in the tree. Oh, this is bad. Really bad. Really bad. Really, really bad. Bad, 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 bad. Oh god, come back here, please. Oh, somehow, some way, this might work. Come to pop. Oh no, he's in the tree. He's like really in it now. Really in it. Oh, I think I got him. I got him. I got him out. No, he's on. Oh. I almost could taste it. Mm, now it just tastes like pain. Well, first one on. And now he's gone. I'm like Dr. Seuss over here. Oh, there we go. There he is. He's here now. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, we got him. Finally. Finally, finally. Ooh, man, this, bottle, this rod with the spin and glow on it and the bait has just been getting absolutely demolished the whole time we've been here. And now it's finally stuck. He got a fish on. Ooh, very nice fish. Very nice fish. What is it? What is it? It's a cutthroat trout. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. No net. Oh my God, you guys. Largest, this is the biggest cutthroat trout I have ever, ever caught. Holy crap. Now these things are legal to keep, but I'm not gonna eat this thing. I, I love these trout a lot. They are purely native to this river, and I'm just not gonna, not gonna do the thing where I take it to eat because I think it's unnecessary. You see that little red gill? That's why they call them the cutthroat. But just look at this thing. Wow. What an incredible trout. Probably at least 21, 22 inches long. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. But I'm not going to eat it. So I'm going to unhook it, let him swim back. And I think this will probably bring us some good karma. Later, bud. Oh, there we go. Here's good karma. There's our good karma. There's our good karma. That's a big one. Oh man, he slammed it. <laughs> oh, that's a big fish. Bend O. Bend O rip it. Oh, that's a huge fish, you guys. I cannot move him at all. I'm gonna keep him really deep because we have a tree right here. I don't know if you guys noticed that. By the last fish. He's running. He's running. Oh, there he goes. Going the right way, though. He's going the right way. We got a good one going. This is going well. Right, go ready. Oh, he's migrating. Holy crap, he's migrating. He's going up. Oh my god. Juicy. Yeah. Oh my god. You guys, I'm not joking. This might be one of my biggest salmon ever. I'm so nervous right now. I don't even know how to explain it. We are literally anchored up in the worst spot possible to land a fish like this. But I'm gonna see if we can do it. My friend Franco is used to fighting giant Chinook. He's used to helping people land fish like this. Oh my God. Like Chile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <dude>. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know if you guys just saw that. I have a, like a dinosaur on my line right now. Wow. Wow, look how, oh God. Oh my gosh. Come on. Jesus. Oh, he, he had another idea. He's leaving now. About like 10 minutes into this fight now, and I cannot 
touch this thing. The only reason we got him that close to the boat the first time is because he swam all the way up river ahead of us trying to migrate up to the next hole. Biggest salmon of my life I ever caught. I landed it in the next hole up from the one I hooked it in because it decided to just run up river and take me clear up to the next spot. I'm starting to gain a little bit on him here, but I'm sweating. I'm nervous. I'm sweating. I'm sweating and I'm nervous. This broke. Well, that sucks. That was a big fish. I think we got a good look at it. If we did, instant replay. If not, whatever. We might have seen it on the chest camera. That fish was easily pushing 30 pounds, 25, 30 pounds. The biggest fish I've hooked this year, for sure. No telling whether we could have kept it or not, but that didn't really matter. Just being able to touch that fish would have been amazing, but that was definitely the one that got away. But that's the problem with using 10 pound tests. We got low water. I'm using very light line here. I honestly did not expect to catch one that big, <sighs> obviously. So, whatever. Guess we'll just keep trying. Holy moly. Yep, yep. <laughs> I was just getting my other line out, uh, about to cast it down into the hole. And uh, I can't even take it now because I'm freaking out. I got a big fish on. And this one I had just sitting in the eddy. Literally, by itself, the boat caught that rod. I actually think it was little. Little got that, little got that fish. That's what I mean. The boat caught that fish. Feels like a coho though. Feels like coho. Feels like a coho. Broke. Came off. You guys, oh, I'm not gonna win. I'm not gonna win today. Anyways, what I was trying to say in between my stupor is that the bobber was just over there and it got a fish. And now it's going. Okay. Okay. Should I let the boat do it again, everybody? Comment below. Should I put the rod down or keep it in my hand? That is the question. We're getting bit all around. Give this a little more line. If I had three hands, I'd be using them. I'll tell you that much right now. Fish. 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 Okay. Oh no. No, 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 stay here. Don't go there. Stay here, not there. Here's better, I promise. Here's better, it tastes better over here. It tastes better over here. Oh, I gotta get a leg up. Oh. There, 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 there. Yes, it's working, it's working. Everybody, it's working. Stop. Okay, okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, no, no. There we go. There we go. Oh man, get my butt kicked again, everybody. God, broke again. Ah! It's on there. It's on there, whatever it is. Might not be big, but it might be dinner. That's all that matters. Doesn't feel big enough for dinner though. Oh, go figure. Lingcod of the sea. Or of the river, rather. This is called a sculpin or a bullhead. Not exactly what we were looking for. But maybe we turn things around. So much for saying karma today. Maybe we should have eaten that trout. Okay, kind of difficult. Back bounce. So guys. Franco speaks English, but explaining everything back and forth in between like Spanish and English can be a little difficult sometimes, but we're gonna do our best here. I'm gonna teach him how to back bounce really quick. So, 
Then here, small amount, small bit every time. Lift up, down, up, bump, bottom. Lift up, yeah, yeah. boom, bottom. Let go back all the way. Yeah. Fight. Leave, leave, leave. No! Don't pull. Ever. Le enjoy for after. Oh, he's gone. He's got him. He's got him. He's got him. <laughs> I just yelled at Frank over setting the hook, but it worked this time. And he's got a fish on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This side. This side. Slow. Slow water. Franco's going to save us, everybody. Franco just might save us. This is a tense moment, everyone. A very tense moment. We've been working all afternoon to get a fish to eat. Oh, it's a really shiny one. Very shiny thing. Very shiny thing. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, up, 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 up there. Up high. Oh! Up, up, up. Got it. Yeah! Franco's first coho in this state, in the United yeah. States. Woohoo! And it's a hatchery, and it's an eater. Thank you, Franco. Give me some love. Yeah! Good job. Hold on, hold on. Dude, it's a hatchery Chinook. Yeah. Hatchery yeah. Chinook, not a coho. Either way, we can keep it, and that means we're eating. Way to go, Franco. Heck yeah. Amazing. Okay, everybody. I'm gonna put this in the bag. Get a bag of ice on it quickly. We're gonna save this thing until the morning because we have to go out and get the other half of our meal. So Franco here loves to fly fish much like myself. And so while he was visiting, I wanted to get him a steelhead on the fly rod. So for the rest of the night, we're gonna do some artsy fartsy stuff and watch the sun go down. Hope you guys enjoy it. Everybody, day number two. Beautiful morning out here in the Pacific Northwest. Mr. Franco, getting to see some new country, and that is a really cool part of having somebody visit, especially from so far away. Uh, I got the opportunity to go down to his home, and he showed me around to some of the places near and dear to his heart, some of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life, honestly. Uh, and so I'm trying to do the same for him, and we are out on the mission this morning to complete our gourmet meal. Still zero dollars spent. I haven't spent a dime, caught some fish, had my friends save the day, and now it's my turn to go into the woods and fill our bellies with some goodness. So it's gonna be a fun day. I cannot wait. We got a little thing we're gonna mix this, this rest of this episode up with because you guys have been asking for this hunting content. And I'm running out of breath because I'm trying to talk too fast. But 
you guys have been asking for this hunting content. I asked it a couple videos back. If you guys didn't see it, go back and just watch the old videos. So a lot of them are really cool, especially if you're new to this channel. We go on a lot of fun adventures. So go back and check out those videos. Um, and I asked you guys if you wanted to see some hunting stuff because we've been seeing a lot of elk lately and I got a big response as to yes. So I brought my muzzle loader, my brand new muzzle loader. Uh, and I'm doing a muzzle loader hunt that starts in a, about a week so I need to go shoot this new gun and we're gonna do that today we're gonna go sight in a gun together so both those of you out there who have never got to do that that's what we're gonna do this afternoon after we do a little rooting around the woods uh, trying to find something to eat so stick around guys it's a beautiful day what is it what is it Shh. well we immediately pulled up to our first stop and little's nose went straight in the air Smell something. Now I'll find, I've found quite a few mushrooms right around this area before. Oh, I gave it away. We're mushroom picking everybody. This is gonna be the second part of our gourmet meal that we're making this evening. And I'm being a little bit quiet because like I just said, it's almost hunting season. And the little dude definitely is smelling something. Got a little game trail right here. It's like something sauce. We'll keep you posted on what we find in here, but the goal is to find some chanterelle mushrooms and or there's one other kind of mushrooms in here that I've never personally picked before. And it is a lobster mushroom. So we have a couple good options. Got a really good area. I'm gonna start rooting around, see if I can find them. Let's do it. Sounded like some timber falling almost, but what I'm pretty sure that sound was, was we just jumped that herd elk little was smelling. Just heard him busting off through the brush here. Sounded again like a freaking tree falling down, but it's not a tree. But I'm heading down into this little gully here where there might be a spring or something. Um, and so I'm just trying to check and see where the moisture's at. You can tell already, I dig down in here a little bit. It's already got that moistness to it, more so than up on the hillsides where the wind and the sun's hitting, so. Sneak our way through here so you can see these elk. Yeah, you can see now why these elk busted. It wasn't because they hurt us, it's because the wind is blowing right at our back, blowing straight into where they're at. So I don't think we're going to see them, but the dirt is moist in here. It's nice and wet. So look at Little's on them. Let's keep going just for shits and gigs. One thing I'm definitely seeing already is that it's very dry. So it's gonna be crucial today. This is the first spot I stopped. I wanted to start in the places where I know I find them and then switch to looking for areas that I've never found them before. Um, it's just a good method of mushroom picking is check the old spots, then find new spots. Um, but I can tell already it's much too dry here. So I'm gonna have to find some springs, maybe get down a lot closer to a river or something. Um, just basically work my way down in elevation from where I am now and look for, look for moisture, look for creeks, springs, different areas that might actually have, have some water in it. Cause this is bone dry. And I mean bone dry. You guys know how dry bones are. See how fresh this is. This dude just tore through here. It looks like a big bull trap too. Kind of came out into this little swamp, little meadow here. I'm sure they're right here, but again, the wind's blowing at our back so hard. We're about to just jump them again. But it's super cool back in here. I didn't even know this existed. Check this out. Obvious sign that things are mating here. We got an old rub. Probably it really no telling how old this thing is considering just how dry it is. It's supposed to be 91 degrees today. This could have been two days ago, but these elk in here, these bulls, you can see where their horns are gouging this. They're rubbing their horns against this, bugling all night. We're right in the middle of the rut, which is gonna make this upcoming hunting season really cool. And I'm excited to show you guys and take you along. So, but anyways, more sign of elk. Pretty neat. He was pretty tall, it looks like.
One. Let's go. Okay, well, it's fairly obvious it's hot. Too dry up here. We didn't keep messing with the elk. I figure since it's almost the season, I don't really want to run them out of there. Uh, so, I guess to kind of go down in elevation. Problem with getting low in elevation and around a lot of, of water at this time of year is you get a really heavy vegetation layer on the ground. And that makes it very, it doesn't necessarily make the mushrooms not grow. It makes it very hard to see them. Um, and so that being the case, I don't think going to this other spot up here is really a good idea because it's on a bald, it's on a, the hillside that the sun is just nailing right now. So like, I guarantee there's no mushrooms in there. So we head down, we start looking for new areas and exploring. And hopefully, hopefully we find ourselves some fun guy. Oh, wow. New favorite treat, strawberry pokey. These things are amazing. Mm. Found a new spot. Came down a couple thousand feet in elevation. Looks beautiful. Let's put boots on the ground. God. Dryer in the popcorn part. Let's head over this goalie down into this little creek bottom, see if there's any water. On water this is a really good sign and you see this big flat in here not a lot of vegetation on the bottom this looks good this is promising good spot for lobsters and chanterelles so let's spread out we'll have franco go to the right we'll have sean go to the left we'll see if we can't find our first inland chanterelles of the year come on come on this is just too perfect you guys really really want to find these sometimes you have to stop trying so hard though if you really want to find something you might just find a four leaf clover while we're at it this is just too good there's moisture there is moisture here and so it's truly all we really need like we really don't need any more than just a little moisture and a little bit of habitat like this talk about elk habitat my god there's elk everywhere in here it's just insane that's what that is right there that's an elk bed that's a little sniff in it I always have to find the mushroom beds. Where are the mushrooms going? Well, things just got real. Sean had a great idea to share this part of the experience because this is day in the life. This video in particular is very day in the life of Jordan and Sean and our now friend Franco for a few days. But we were up in the woods, got a call from the godfather Marlon, who is my partner and one of my best friends in, the, in these YouTube channels. Uh, and Marlon called and said, the upload that we're supposed to do for Sunday for our channel Addicted Fishing has some stuff wrong with it. And we are an hour from home up in the woods trying to film this video. And now we are running home. I'm not to show you the speed because I'm breaking the speed limit right now. Sorry, mom. Uh, and we gotta go fix this video which completely screws up this day. Marlon wants to go hunting with his wife tonight, so he's, his day's getting messed up and we are running in circles, making this thing work. You know, that's kind of how life is sometimes, especially with two different YouTube channels. We post three videos a week and a lot of the videos take multiple days to make, so it's like busy all the time, but I love it. And I love bringing you guys along for the adventure and the ride, it's more of a ride, especially for these guys right now. But we're rushing back home, but then we have a plan. I have a plan. So stick around and see what that is because I think we're going to have a cool night still. Well, crisis averted. We got Sean back and we ditched him. So the rest of this episode, the rest of this episode is just going to be me and Franco out here facing the world all by our lonesomes. I got one more spot I'm going to check for the mushrooms. But as we were driving to this mushroom spot, I found one more piece of my recipe that I really, really want. It's gonna make a delicious salad dressing, but you guys are gonna have to see what the actual lettuce is, what the greenery is gonna be, because it's very cool and it's very interesting. And I think you guys are gonna, I think you guys are gonna like it. And I know I'm gonna like it. I've had it before and it's very tasty. So it's gonna go well with the salmon and the mushrooms that we find, fingers crossed. But what we're talking about are these bad boys. Right, yeah. Not exactly those ones, because those ones look kind of gross, but blackberries, everybody. We're gonna make a blackberry dressing. Let's do it. 
I want to find some ripe ones. Don't need many. This is mainly going to just add to like the essence of the salad dressing that I'm going to make. So there's a couple. We don't need but probably 20, 30 of these little bad boys. So this should be perfect. Let's find a few more. Man, they all are drying out. Everything's dry. Everybody in your living rooms or in your cars or at work, wherever you're watching this video, please do the rain dance for me. Cause I know we really need it. Now this is crazy. This is like the show of a lack of rain. We have, I just heard a deer. So funny thing is we ran into Marlin. I mean, it's this deer season right now and I'm pretty sure I just jumped a deer and he just left. So hopefully it's not a buck or a shootable buck because uh, he's not here with his gun. My gun's in the car. I can hear him crashing around through the bushes, but I can't see him. But I'm distracted once again by these beauties. These are perfect. That should be plenty of blackberries. It's not much, but it's all I'm gonna need for the dressing that I'm gonna make. So it's been a fun day. It's freaking hot. I want to say that much. Let's have a, ow. Ow, ow, ow. Let's all do the rain dance with me. Please, please. Okay, let's go. Okay, made it back home. The sun is just finally setting. What a freaking day this has been. And I'm starving. It's time to complete this meal. I'm gonna save the shooting for the next video. I have a really, really cool plan for this next video that we're going to do um, in the morning here. So I need to get this meal made. I need to fill this belly and get some nutrients inside of me because tomorrow we are hiking way into a very, very special lake. A place that I've wanted to go to forever. And it's a backpacking trip, our first backpacking trip on Stay Fishy. So be looking out for that next Wednesday. Uh, and then we're gonna shoot the gun in the next video. That's my point. We're gonna start it off with sighting in the muzzle loader. So one order of business still left. And it just so happens that I'm a horrible, horrible lawn keeper. And this is what we're eating. Dandelions. Dandelions can be a very, very, very tasty and delicious salad has a very, very similar taste to arugula. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of this. I have a special idea for my recipe, for my, my uh, dressing for this. So without further ado, let's pick some of this. Let's get inside and let's get to cooking. Awesome. That should be plenty for our salad. Got a couple other ingredients that's gonna go with it. So you can see it really does resemble arugula a lot. Let me go inside and wash this off a little bit. I know where this stuff has been, obviously, but it should make a great salad. It's time to cut up Franco's fish. It's been a long awaited meal here, but I think this thing has turned out more gourmet than I expected. Oh, what a beautiful king. Scrape some of that slime off of that bad boy. Great colored meat, especially for this time of year. These fish tend to be a little bit on the paler side when it comes to a fall Chinook salmon. Uh, another episode that I did was with a spring Chinook salmon, and that is one of the tastiest and most sought after meats. And this really resembles that a lot. So I'm excited to get this in my belly. Oh, look at that. That was the perfect filet. Got the skin meat. We got that skin membrane stuff off that belly too. Okay, look at that marbling. Look at that fat. That's some grade A choice PNW meat right there. Oh, the time has come. This has been a long, hard fought win. And what I'm gonna do here actually today is I have my dandelion salad. I'm gonna make my blackberry balsamic vinaigrette. I have some morels that I'm rehydrating from previous episodes that we filmed this spring. And you can see how these things, they start as a very dried out, Kind of decrepit old looking thing. But once you put some warm water to them and let them sit around for a few minutes, they start to come right back to life. But nevertheless, we haven't spent a dime and we are about to have a delicious, delicious dinner here. So let's get started. 
I always like to kind of dab off my fish to get all that slime, uh, to get kind of that stinky nature off of it. The fall chinook can be very strong, strong scented fish. Um, made myself a little boat here, a little boat. Check out my cute little boat. And I'm gonna do an Asian inspired recipe tonight. And because of my man and my very dear friend Taku came out with this chili crisp. And I saw him use it in an episode. Uh, Taku is a channel, it's called Outdoor Chef Life. And he's an amazing, amazing chef. I, I definitely envy him and give him a lot of respect because one, he's a super cool dude. And two, he has some incredible ideas when it comes to cooking. So he's a great person to watch if you like to figure out more delicious meals just like this one in wild forage, wild caught gourmet food. So we're gonna go with a little bit of the, his uh, brand new sauce that he came out with, Chili Crisp. So I'm gonna go, just to start, I'm gonna go small amount of olive oil. There we go, I'm gonna rub that around. That way that Chili Crisp kinda has something to stick to. Ooh, that looks, look at that shininess. Look at that marbling too. This is one of the nicer fall Chinook that I've, that I've caught in a long time as far as it, to the marbling and the coloration of that meat. That's just fantastic looking. Okay, I'm gonna go a very small amount of rice wine vinegar on here. I don't want that stuff to really get in the bottom of the pan because that'll start to burn and stink. And I, I've become a very big fan of rice wine vinegar, you guys. It just has such an amazing flavor. Uh, and it's something that I've been using a lot on all different kinds of fish. So give that a shot if you want that kind of kick and that tanginess to any recipe. Go with just a little bit of some homemade garlic seasoning. So we're gonna go with a little bit of this chili oil crisp. I don't think this stuff's very spicy. I'll have to give it a try really quick. But this is gonna give a really, really savory and some kind of probably mildly sweet flavor. That rice wine vinegar is pretty sweet itself. So again, didn't really add a ton of salt or anything to this. Might do a little bit of cracked sea salt on it as well here in just a second, but no less. This looks delish. This is exactly what I had in mind. Close this bad boy up. Close our boat. Okay, ready to go on the grill. Give this one a nice little toss. Let them kind of strain out here. You never know what kind of chemicals are going to be on them. And for that matter, animal matter. This look pretty good. I'm actually fairly impressed really does have a nice consistency to it. Getting these things a little bit earlier in the year than late summer like I have right now obviously helps a little bit. Um, but nevertheless, you can kind of see how crispy and fresh that still is. Pick out some of those little dead pieces, make sure there's no bugs in there. Give one more in. Okay. Now these have spider webs and little bugs all over them. So I'm gonna get a good wash on those. Gonna toss them around. Okay. Now for a vinaigrette. I'm gonna take just a few of these bad boys, preferably the ones that are kind of falling apart already. Those are gonna have great flavor uh, and they're gonna mix up well. They're not gonna be all chunky like that. With that, we're gonna go a little bit of olive oil, balsamic vinaigrette, and a little bit of some garlic and Parmesan oil. Give it a little bit of savory in there. I'm just gonna take my fork and whip this stuff up. To do it proper, to make a proper salad dressing, usually you're gonna wanna use a food processor or something. Um, that'll really kind of get this stuff all mixed together, but we're not gonna go that crazy. I like a lumpy dressing, if you know what I'm saying. Mmm, smells delicious. Okay, let's check our fish. Ta-da! Looks like cooked fish to me. Nice and flaky juicy on the inside and this stuff keeps cooking for a little bit once you take it off of the grill so let's go ahead and do one of these give it a little hood if you will this fish is living in the hood it's about to be living in my belly <laughs> hey the mushrooms have come back to life they're alive franken mushrooms but isn't that crazy very very cool and you can let these go a little bit longer i did them in warm water so they rehydrate pretty darn quick that way but we're gonna go in the pan with these and do a nice saute on them. Okay, things are sizzling, all the water's cooked off. Time for our butter. Lord. 
special garlic seasoning once again. Fresh cracked pepper. A little bit of parmesan. A little mesh of, of cultures here. We got an Asian inspired fish. We have a redneck inspired salad. And we have an Italian inspired mushroom. Mmm, right. mushrooms are ready. Time to toss some salad. What a treat. Look at that beautiful color, everybody. Let's get us a nice little chunk cut here. For me and my friend Franco. Thank goodness for Franco. And comment below you guys with what you think. My plan is, is in December, to actually travel to South, Southern Patagonia again and see Franco and, um, and stay with him for a couple of weeks. Oh my God, that's so good. That's insanity. But my plan is to go to Southern Patagonia and stay with Franco for a few weeks and film trying to catch some of the biggest Chinook salmon in the world. It actually came from this region, like I said before in the video. So I wanna see your comments and support. I'm looking for sponsors for the video because it's gonna cost us a lot of money to go down there and I wanna bring you guys the coolest footage possible. So let that be said, looking for cool video sponsors for these Patagonia videos. And also I wanna see your guys' response on what you think of the idea of going down there and chasing the Chinook and fishing for some of the biggest trout in the world as well. So with all that being said, it's time to feed my friend. Isn't that beautiful? Just have a look. Zero dollar meal right there. Didn't even put gas in the truck. All right, here you go, my friend. Well done. Good job. Well, everybody, we had a mechanical error here and our audio did not work on the camera for the taste test of this amazing recipe. So I thought I'd do a little voiceover while I sit here and magically talk to the camera. And I wanna thank you guys all for tuning into this amazing episode. I had a blast making it, and just so you know, this meal turned out absolutely incredible. I have to say that that dandelion salad really was a lot better than I expected. The morels complimented the beautiful salmon that we caught. And Taku's chili crisp was absolutely amazing. So if you guys don't know who Taku is, go check out his channel, Outdoor Chef Life, and order some of his chili crisp because it is absolutely delicious. And with all that being said, until next week, same time, same place, you all stay fishy, and we'll see you out there.